Welcome to the webinar for the Utah Arts and Museums Grant for General Operating Support Grants. If you were not able to attend our live webinar, we are recording it here for you. I, my name is Laurel, and I'm joined here by Raquel Cornali. Uh, the two of us manage the grants program, and we are glad that you are tuning in for some additional information as we work on uh, changing process this year and making process better than ever. Um, so a quick agenda for the webinar. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple things. First, why we've made these changes. Um, we've made a couple changes, as you've probably noticed, so we'll talk about some of that. We'll also talk about the impact of the 2019 legislative session, which is currently happening, um, and how that impacts our grants program. We'll talk about each of the general operating support categories. Um, and then we'll talk about how to apply, including the, each of the application sections, and we'll talk about the budget. And then we'll give a, a really quick grant update, and then we'll, um, we probably won't do questions, so we'll move on from that. Great. So uh, first of all, we'll talk briefly about why the changes. Uh, the most important thing for us is that we want to streamline the process. We really have a desire to make the grant application process as clear and as, and as simple as possible. We know that everybody is stretched thin, and we want to acknowledge that and, and work with you. Uh, we have all of the grants opening and closing on the same day, uh, March 22nd at 5 p.m. Uh, why does this matter? It matters for a good number of reasons. It allows us to take a big picture look at all of the applications that we have for general operating support. It also allows any, uh, any organization that uh, is seeking money directly from the Utah State Legislature to know what that funding is, and then they can come to us uh, if, if they are not funded through the uh, request for appropriations process. Uh, we are really grateful to the governor for including a request for an additional $6 million ongoing to the grants budget. This is a game changer, uh, and it is such an affirmation of the uh, work that each one of you does in the community. Uh, and we are incredibly grateful to the legislators who have been supportive and who have, uh, who are um, behind this. There are huge questions that we have as to how this will all work out in terms of um, the, the final dollar, the final recommendations will not be known until the end of the legislative session, which is next week. Uh, we have here some talking points because this is such an important thing for our cultural community um, and because this was included in the governor's budget we are very grateful to be able to advocate directly on behalf of this request uh, our legislators serve each constituent you will find that you will hear from us that we are going to be making more of an effort to help you communicate to your legislators not only in this specific request, but also if you receive grant funding, because we want each legislator to understand where their dollars are going and what you are doing within your community. We have a, a few talking points. You can um, copy and paste this or look on our website uh, and get additional uh, information. So what are the changes? Um, first, if you have already started applying, you will notice that when you log into the portal, um, you'll need to submit what we call the FY20 DHA questionnaire um, for general operating support, and that will take you through a series of questions, and once you answer that, it will filter you directly to the appropriate grant for your organization. If for some reason um, it takes you to the wrong one or you feel like maybe you've answered the questions wrong, just let us know, and we can get the, the correct application created for you so you can fill out the one that is appropriate for your organization. So there are six types of general operating support grants. Um, we've put them into three kind of bucket categories. There's arts, museums, and local arts agencies. And within each of those, we have a budget, um, an application for budgets over $300,000 and then for budgets under $300,000. Um, and we try to make those applications slightly different um, between the funding, um, between the operating budget levels. Um, so for for organizations with smaller budgets under $300,000, we tried to make the application a little simpler um, by 
um, having, having smaller character limits so that you don't have to write a lot of text. Um, and we've tried to change some of the question formats so that we have some more checkboxes um, and other little answers that you don't have to spend a lot of time filling out a lot of large narrative questions. So we, we hope that's helpful, but we're also looking for feedback on any of that. And if it's not helpful, let us know. Um, for the, the next thing is two-year grants. Um, so for FY20, we have decided that grant awards will be a two-year grant process um, award cycle. And what that means is that if you apply for um, $5,000 in FY20 and you are awarded that, then you will get $5,000 in FY20 and then $5,000 in FY21 without filling out a whole new application for FY21. Um, and we'll talk about how that also um, fits into your budget request um, in the other budget questions as we, as we move on. Um, and then the budget table for your grant request. So that refers to um, one of the pages that we have in our new application guidelines. And the budget table um, gives you a breakdown of percentages of what you can actually request for your grant based on the size of your budget. And we'll go over that as well. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to call us after that. So where to start? We want you to start with the master guidelines. They are on our website and they are under the grants tab. We have a plethora of information there. Uh, the master guidelines give all of the general information and policies for the grants and then we have individual question guidelines that are tied to whichever application you are uh, completing. Yeah, and now we're going to go over the application in the next couple slides. Um, there are now five sections to the application um, when there used to be only four. Um, the first one is general information, and then that's not scored, but the rest of the other sections will be scored, and we'll go over each of those now. Okay, so when you log in, this is the website, uamgrants.utah.gov, and there are links throughout our website to get to here, but again, it's uamgrants.utah.gov. You will see an FY20 questionnaire for all GOS grants. I've got an arrow to that here. Uh, you'll click on the Apply tab, and there it's a very short questionnaire. Once you fill out that questionnaire and submit it, then you will be taken to this page, which is, you'll be redirected to this page, which is uh, the, the main page, and you can look under My Applications, slash evaluations, and a new grant application will have been created for you. So I've got a box here around this uh, new application that was created once the questionnaire was filled out. Uh, in order to go into that, you can see it's in draft form. Um, I had put in a funding request amount, just some very basic information when I filled out the application. You click on the um, green uh, icon and, uh, and you can go in and complete that application. Uh, this is a system that uh, you need to save, but you can exit it and then come back to it at another time. Uh, you'll again go to the same page by applications and then you'll go in through this, uh, this green pencil icon um, to uh, complete it. Once you submit it, then you actually can't go back into it, uh, but if you find that you have a problem, we can reopen it for you and put it back into draft mode, but that would uh, require contacting Raquel or me to do that. This is what the front page looks like once you get in. Uh, you've got uh, these three um, items need to be completed. Uh, you need to put a funding amount request in and the title and the description are both short. Uh, they should be short. They are what will, if you, are, if you receive a grant, if the uh, grant review committee awards funding to you, then uh, this is the information that will show up on your contract. So a brief description is appropriate. Um, so the first section, which we talked about, is not scored, is general information. Um, and that will be a series of questions on contact information. We're also asking a couple new questions this year to help with some data collection. Um, and one of those is whether or not your organization is considered um, existing in a rural area. Um, and that's part of the governor's initiative to get uh, 25,000 jobs in, in 25 counties. So we're just trying to keep track of this data. Um, and then you'll see some new questions, um, questions 18 through 20, which will be used for our Kim Gardner economic contribution calculator. 
and we'll ask for things like payroll, um, number of employees, etc. And then there's um, a question about revenue, and then we also ask a new question that asks for if you're receiving any kind of local option tax, which is normally something like a RAP or a RAMP or a ZAP um, type fund that you're getting um, from a municipality or a county. Um, so that is a, an optional question, but if, you, you know, if you're not getting it, then you don't have to put anything in there. If you are, we'd like to know what that looks like as well. Okay. Um, Raquel, I think I got us off, off topic or off slides. Do you want to take this one as well? Sure. Um, so the next section will be an actual scored section, and that will be either artistic excellence or museum best practices. Um, artistic excellence will apply to any arts and local arts agencies, while museum best practices will be for museums. Um, and really what we're looking for in that section is um, for artistic excellence at least, what are you doing that um, shows that your organization is doing programming and services that are considered artistically excellent? Like what are the standards you're looking at, your processes, you know, how you're planning your season, things like that. Um, for museum best practices, we're really looking for um, what types of practices you're using in your museum um, to make sure that you're doing the best that you can be doing. Um, and there are a lot of different best practices that you can use for museums. We can um, get you in touch with our museum staff if you'd like to get some really comprehensive information on that as well. Um, but one question that is the same in, in both museums and arts applications is that we ask for some work samples. Um, and you can provide um, some JPEGs um, and some other photos or, or documents that have you know, programs or pictures of your museum or pictures of your um, events, but we also ask if you have any kinds of um, video samples that you'd like to present to include the link with a short description um, in a PDF. And so that's what we have here on the screen. So just um, this really indicates to the panelists um, what section of the video you'd like them to watch, especially if the video is really long, um, so that they know kind of where to focus in and, and understand what you're trying to present. The next scored section is community engagement. We want you to describe your community to begin with. We want to understand your community. Uh, we are a big state geographically, and our panel members may or may not have been to your community. So describe it to them and help us understand how you understand your community. We also ask, our money comes from the Utah State Legislature as well as the National Endowment for the Arts, for arts organizations, not, not for museums, but for arts organizations. Um, so with, with it being public funding, we ask why your organization merits public funding from the state of Utah uh, and from the federal government if appropriate. Uh, we have to justify that to the voters. We have to justify that to the governor and the legislators. So we need to have you help us understand that and help make your case. Uh, in terms of the following four questions, we have a, as an agency, we have done quite a bit of work listening to uh, people throughout the state of Utah. We've done a lot of listening sessions and we are uh, just in the process of wrapping up the first big element of a recent strategic planning process. One of the things that we heard loud and clear was that the state would like us to focus on uh, being inclusive, serving diverse audiences, providing equity and providing access. And that means that is important to the field in general, and it's important for us to understand, again, how you are doing that work. It's really important for us to, to understand and, and for you to be able to articulate the kinds of things that you are doing to uh, support uh, inclusion, diversity, equity, and access. So there are, there are four questions, um, two each for, uh, one for, two for inclusion and diversity, and two for equity and access. The, uh, they're on the, on the applications for smaller organizations, we've given you a list of check boxes, and, and we in no way see this activity as a checkbox kind of activity. The reason we provided some check boxes was to give you a sense of the kinds of things that we are looking at. We've struggled for a long time with uh, answers that are short in this area, and we really would like to, to have 
a better understanding of the work that you are doing. So that's why the, the check boxes and then there's a narrative following that. On the flip side, for our larger organizations, we really uh, wanted to give you the opportunity to fully tell your story in your own way and in your own words. Uh, so we've given you the same list that we provided in the small applications, but it's just as a list format and we are expecting you to write a narrative that helps us understand the work that you are doing. We do not expect organizations to be perfect at this and, and we recognize that we as an organization, Utah Arts and Museums, doesn't start in a place of perfection. This is a work to be done and this is work that we are, are participating in uh, right alongside you. So sound management, um, this will this has a couple questions in it um, that just kind of talks about the uh, the fiscal health of your organization. Um, one of the questions we ask is about you know, the organizational structure, including your staff and board. Um, and then we also ask you for evaluation, um, and we've asked for evaluation in the past couple of years, and so we're asking for it still again. Um, and so we want to know, this is really important to us, kind of what you're doing within your organization to be evaluating or measuring um, the work that you're doing and the impact that it has um, in your community. Um, so if you're not doing any kind of evaluation methods, um, you should start considering that and, and put that into the grant and then see how you can follow through on it. Um, because if you are funded, uh, we will ask in your final report um, how you've actually followed through with the evaluation processes and what you found um, through, the, through the scope of the grant that you have been measuring and evaluating. Um, the other thing that we ask for is for you to upload your operating budget template, um, which is actually our operating budget template. Um, so we ask that you go to our website and download the form and then fill out all of the appropriate um, line items that apply to your organization. Um, and when we talked at the beginning of the webinar, we talked about your budget request table and this is what is on the screen now. Um, we've just taken a screenshot of it. And it basically goes over, um, based on the size of your organization's revenue for the most completed uh, verifiable fiscal year, what you can request based on that amount. Um, so we hope that this is helpful for you. We also want you to remember that the grants are still um, cash match one-to-one. -one. Um, and again, just a reminder that Whatever you are requesting for FY20 um, will also be the amount that you're receiving for FY21. Um, so we don't need you to double the amount in your request. You just need to have the request as you normally would, and then we will use that request amount um, for 20 and 21. Thanks, Raquel. To follow that up, uh, let's say you asked for $20,000 and we funded you at $8,000 and uh, you would get that award for $8,000 in FY20, uh, and then you would, and the contract would also read that you would get that same amount following the filing of a final report for FY21, provided that our budget doesn't dramatically change. So, uh, and there, it's a there's catch language in there, but uh, that's, that is the way, so you will not be applying again in 2021. We will be putting people on a staggered rotation over the course of time. So uh, some people may be uh, waiting yet one more year to apply um, and we'll, we'll be communicating. There are a lot of details with this uh, really related to the amount of funding that we receive from the legislature and, uh, and process that, that is new to us. So bear with us as we work through this. We published on the web a budget form cheat sheet. Uh, it, it's really helpful to us if you'll take a look at this. We've tried to highlight the places that uh, people notoriously have a hard time seeing or, or, or capturing. We've put yellow, uh, we've created yellow boxes where we really want to make sure you have numbers. Um, we've also, we've tried to do a lot of things to simplify and one of the things I'm very happy about is I, I can let you know that if you are in the Salt Lake County or Salt Lake City you will see that there are some similarities between our budget form and providing three years uh, to what the Zoo Arts and Parks program is asking for in their budget and also some similarities to what Salt Lake City Arts Council is asking for. So we are we are working together to try and again streamline things for you and make things easier. Um, one of the things that we have a lot of questions about from people uh, is what we want in the, in the three years. 
and what we want is a pre the first column uh, should be your previous completed fiscal year. Uh, we expect that the we, we expect really that your revenue and your expenses won't necessarily match up in a previous year. Life is messy. Um, where it's not messy is where you're pro uh, projecting into the future. So we we would ask you to project out in this third column, and we expect that though that your revenue and your expenses would uh, match as projected uh, numbers. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a particular grant in hand, but we want to know that you have a good sense as to where your match and where your income is coming from. We know, again, that uh, life takes turns, and so you have to have backup plans for those turns and, and apply for more money than you, uh, from more organizations than you uh, expect to be funded through and, and hope for the very best. So we know that life goes that direction. We also will be able to, uh, we, we want to be able to come back to you and we'll ask you to, it, it's really important for you to keep a copy of this budget that you submit to us uh, on your files where you know you can find it because you'll be coming back in and you'll be replacing the projected numbers next year in your final report with what your actuals are. That's the process we're doing this year as well. Uh, and I'll mention, when I'm talking about final reports, we've had some questions from people who are wonderfully proactive. Our final reports for our FY19, the year that we are currently in, are not yet available for you to fill out. We've been leapfrogging that, that changes, that's gonna change a little bit as we move to two-year grants, but this year those, grant, those final reports are not yet available. Um, and so, we've, as I said, please make use of this cheat sheet. And then if you have questions after you've looked at the cheat sheet and can't figure it out, please give us a call. We, it's really a lot easier for us to correct a problem before you submit an application than struggle with an incorrect budget that we can't necessarily replace. Um, and so the last section of the grant, which is a new section, uh, will be ranked amongst other applicants is our UANM target priority section. Um, and that section con contains two questions. One is an actual question. The second is an upload question to provide um, evidence or a demonstration of what you have explained in your answer to the first question. Um, but the question is, please tell us about exceptional work that your organization has done within the past two years in one or two of UANM strategic target areas. Um, and you can find those strategic target areas in the master GOS instructions and the question guidelines, um, or maybe just the question guidelines um, for each of the appropriate um, applications. Um, but what we're really looking for in this, in this question is for your organization to brag about work that you are particularly proud of in one or two of the areas that we are focusing on. And these strategic target areas are areas of focus that we have found through our strategic planning process. Um, and they include things like um, serving rural areas, um, economic contribution, et cetera. So um, hopefully your work also aligns with some of our work. And so we just wanna know what you're doing that, that you're really proud of and that is maybe a little bit different than some of the answers you've provided in the previous um, sections in um, community engagement. So tell us what you're doing um, and tell us why it's exciting. Thank you. Last, what's on the horizon? Uh, we just wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, we, we do have a one grant per organization policy, so if you're applying for general operating support, most likely this won't apply to you, but you may be in a community where you want to make sure other people are aware of this. Arts learning grants, which are for uh, schools and for community organizations looking to bring in a specific artist to work with, a professional artist to work with a population of, of individuals that could be a uh, senior center or a correctional facility, that kind of organization will also be due on March 22nd. Uh, project grants, we are currently evaluating these. We expect that we'll have some kind of project grant. We have had arts project grants available in the past and we expect that we'll have something uh, available in the future. We, but because we are um, wanting to make some important changes to those grants as well, we've put those on hold. 
Uh, Folk Arts grants are going to be roughly the same time frame. They'll open in May and they'll close in September. Uh, and they will look very similar to what they looked like last year. So if you want to look at, at uh, last year's guidelines, um, you can do so. Our on-stage grants are the one exception to the uh, one grant, one rule. If you are a presenter of performing arts, on-stage grants might be available to you. You can look at those guidelines. They will be available uh, in May, uh, and they will close probably in late June. Um, so if you have any questions, just please call us. Um, the grants team is, is me and Laurel, um, and we're always available for any kind of technical questions that you have um, regarding you know, how to access the grants portal, or if you have any kind of general questions um, about any of the arts um, or local arts agency grants, we're happy to help with some of those. But we also have some additional staff members here at um, UANM, um, and they're listed below. But Tracy is our local arts agency representative, and so if you have any questions specifically about that application or your eligibility for that grant, you can contact her. Um, Jennifer Ortiz and Emily Johnson are our museum services um, specialists, and so they can help you with your museum grants. Um, Jean Irwin is our arts education director, and she'll help with any arts learning grants that you're applying for. And then Jason Bocut is kind of our uh, person who deals with a lot of arts organizations. So if you have any other general arts questions um, about the applications and, and Laurel and, and I are not available, you can feel free to call Jason and all of their contact information is up on our website. Thank you for joining us today and uh, we look forward to seeing your application soon. March 22nd, 5 p.m. is the deadline. It does take a couple of days to get uh, things set up on uh, our end very often in terms of getting a, a portal. So if you haven't started, we encourage you to get started right away. 